Uh, hey everyone, CPO here, and I just wanted to show you real quick what I've been working on uh, with my tricopter build. Uh, I started a thread in RC groups talking about my CPO modified uh, tricopter, and I did a lot of 2D uh, CAD drawing work, but I wanted to uh, take a moment to model up something in a 3D space so I could really see how it's going to work. Um, and oddly enough, just today I got a box from China that has a bunch of my tricopter parts in it. My motors, props, uh, all kinds of goodies, uh, speed controllers, and all of that. So uh, I'm excited about that. But I'm still working on the initial design. Um, and this uh, that I'm showing you right now is basically a standard um, RC Explorer uh, style uh, tricopter using the coffin uh, body. So, um, and what I did is I just mounted a, a GoPro camera uh, on the front of it on a camera tray and I just dropped it down 20 millimeters which seems to be a fairly decent place to start. And then from here I start customizing. Um, but this is pretty much the standard uh, tricopter build um, with the exception of the fact uh, that I did use 12.7 uh, millimeter wood booms which is uh, what we're going to have in the United States. Uh, which changed things a little bit. Uh, whole placements are going to have to change a little bit, um, but uh, it should be pretty much uh, default outside of that. So first thing is, um, I did not uh, model this GoPro camera. Uh, I got this off of the uh, the internet on a uh, CAD uh, model sharing place. Whoever did it did a really cool job. I made some modifications, but for the most part, it is um, as it was. So I'll share that in the uh, in the video description of where I got that. The other thing I did not model uh, were these motors. These are DT750 Hobby King motors. Um, I didn't model them. I did, again, make a few adjustments to my needs, uh, but for the most part, I left the motors uh, in the same uh, configuration they were in. Uh, and then uh, I did not model these props. Uh, I did uh, make them uh, shorter. Um, I made them fit my size, which would be 10 uh, 10 inch props. So I had to make some changes to them. Uh, and then I did some things uh, like uh, make this a movable model. So with that said, um, basically um, I can swing these arms out into the uh, Y copter 120 degree configuration. Uh, my props are articulable, uh, so I can uh, make sure that I uh, am able to see that in the model, uh, which will come in really handy um, here in just a second when I show you how I'm or why I'm doing all this work. Uh, mostly because it's been a great learning experience, uh, but then also uh, I wanted to take a look at field of view as it relates to the GoPro camera and the tricopter. So I figured, you know, this is a fairly decent standard tricopter design. And I already modeled up some stuff in 2D, so I have a good indication of what I'm going to end up with when I'm done. Uh, and for example, instead of uh, 120 degrees between these arms, I think I'm going to be pulling these back just a little bit to about 135 degrees between the arms. Uh, but outside of that, it'll be pretty close. That's obviously going to require me uh, to have to make some changes on these uh, you know, mounting holes. Um, and it already, as you can see, with the standard uh, uh, standard hole position for the 10 millimeter booms, 12.5 millimeter booms would cause me to have to move uh, this uh, these mounting holes anyway. So uh, I'm just kind of going to go through and work this um, as I need to. But for now, uh, let's just push these all the way forward. And uh, so now let's talk about the GoPro field of view. So what I did uh, is I basically, let me show you this. So I basically um, mapped out the GoPro field of view and modeled it here. The GoPro uh, default field of view it's going to be a 120 degree horizontal field of view and a 90 degree vertical field of view. And of course, um, that was a little bit challenging to model, but I think I came up with a reasonable solution to it. Um, and basically what I have here is, uh, I mean, from the side view, actually, let me just make this a lot easier on myself. 
and take a look at uh, the side. I also have the camera tilted down at uh, 10 degrees here from the, the tricopter body. But that's a, a 90 degree upper field of view. And then if we look at uh, the other side, uh, that's a 120 degree uh, field of view. Um, this part actually, um, you probably want to look at it from the top. So that would be a 120 degree field of view there. And uh, so as you can see already, uh, my props are cutting into this field of view. And I already posted this on RC Groups on uh, in a 2D model, uh, kind of how that looks. Um, but as you, you can see, whoops, I'm upside down. Let me flip over here. Um, pretty much anything that's popping out here in front of the field of view is going to be shown in the... Uh, in the FPV video that we're going to get uh, out of this uh, environment. So uh, my plan is to develop my tricopter when I build it to eliminate that. And like I said, it could be as simple as sweeping these arms back. Let me go back to a straight on top view here. Um, you know, if I, if I sweep these arms back to about here, uh, with this particular prop, that's going to guarantee um, I don't have props in the field of view. And then what I would do is just kind of sort out what is uh, what is that degree there. Whoops, that's not what I want. So I would measure this and then figure out what that degree is. 135 degrees, which is kind of what I expected uh, it to be. Um, so 135 uh, degrees uh, instead of 120 degrees for this front uh, sweep would get me out of the field of view with my particular prop. So I mapped that out. Um, you can go look at my RC Groups uh, thread. Just do a search for CPO uh, modified tricopter or something like that. But um, I mapped it out in a 2D environment and uh, then I just modeled it. And as you can see, the model matches uh, what I figured out on the 2D. Uh, so pretty interesting. Yay me. Um, so uh, I'll do some more playing around. There's some obvious some other ways to get around the field of view issue. Uh, one of them is to ignore it completely. A lot of great videos out there that you can see the props up in the up in the sides of the the video display. Um, you could push the camera forward some to get in front of these props, but I did uh, I did measure that out, and it's going to be nearly 60 millimeters moving forward. Um, I don't know if I want my camera hanging that far out away from the body. Uh, I don't know yet. Uh, the other thing is to lower it, uh, you know, obviously the lower you uh, make your camera. This already has a 10 degree tilt, like I mentioned before, um, but if I lowered it down, um, I might be able to get it out of the field of view. This is only a 20 degree drop. I will probably drop it more than that because what I'd like to do is mount the battery here on this tray with the camera and put some, some of that weight uh, on the camera tray to uh, kind of reduce vibration as well. But I've got a little bit more work to do. I just thought I'd show you kind of where I'm at uh, and what I'm working on uh, in particular uh, because my uh, helicopter parts just uh, arrived today. So I've got these motors, props, uh, ESCs, I've got even uh, a Hobby King uh, quad controller, although I have a KK 2.1 board somewhere uh, on a slow boat from China, actually from Malaysia apparently. Uh, but anyway, that's it. Um, if you're interested, I may do a video on uh, assembling. Uh, the tricopter in SolidWorks uh, and show how I get, uh, you know, articulable arms and propellers and how all that stuff kind of comes together and how I, how I basically assembled it in, uh, in this program. Uh, but for now, I fold that up, uh, hide my field of view, and uh, there's what we get. So with that said, um, that is uh, where I'm at on my tricopter design. So uh, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.